So this mic, um, Dan, I know you said you replaced the battery, but it keeps sort of out, I think. So we'll see how long it lasts.
turn it over to our consultant, David Anhol, unless there's any questions. But I do just want to, I don't know if you, if many of you know David, David is a, I prefer to. Right. Okay. I think the short answer is it's why we're here. Place to start a new discussion about it. There'll be, there'll be an extended process with this, but this is step one of that process. Okay. David? It's all yours. Uh, I'm sure there is, Peter. I'm sure there is. And, and we'll, re 
visit those things. Um, but this is existing site conditions. Um, you know, the property is just is fabulous uh, from a you know, landscape character standpoint. You know, there's just a lot of positive things about it. Um, it really has sort of rich natural water resources. You know, Lincoln Hill uh, Creek has internal streams, has springs, wetlands, you know, all those things. It has uh, just a diverse and, uh, and, and abundant um, native plant communities largely associated with those water resources. It has just a wonderful landform. And, and I think the other thing about the park is just the location. Really, you're being surrounded by development. Um, I think it's kind of an interesting dynamic for the park that you have this very naturalistic area and you have this more developed uh, you know, urban area around it. It really sets up a, you know, I think it's kind of a very interesting dynamic. It gives both, it makes the both of those things stronger for this adaptation. Um, well, just a couple, uh, just a couple of arrows on the map to show you know, where the next two, uh, next two photos are taken from. There's, there's kind of a little promontory. Uh, well, this is just a photo from the existing promontory. It's just what juts out in the middle of the park. This is uh, looking uh, to the northwest. So you can really see what a really kind of beautiful spot it is. Yeah, it's kind of the, the uh, well, the meadows in the foreground and, and the play area with the, with the old trail behind and, and the blue Ridge mountain behind that. It's just, it's a, just a beautiful sort of layer in that. But I think it's interesting too, you can really see you know, Jarman's Gap uh, in a way in the background. So I think it's just a spring connection. You know, for this piece of property and Jarman's Gap, and, you know, historically that was the, you know, the, the Jarman's Gap is kind of where, where all that action was for, you know, Native Americans and animals migrating between the, the valley and the Piedmont. And this is just a photo look in the other direction. And again, kind of a layer in fact with the weapon down in the foreground and the, the, the trees and the, and the uh, slopes in the background. Uh, I think one thing about the park is that, that it really is starting to grow up. You know, it really used to be more open. There's a lot of wooden areas moving in. Uh, about the park that uh, are constraints to building, but at the same time, they really add this kind of wonderful character to the land. And so depending on how you look at them, you know, it could be a little negative, it could be a little more positive. But uh, this, this uh, plan shows kind of the critical slopes in red. And so you can see that those slopes kind of define the, the edge of the park with the, with the flood plan that you know, the weapons being the middle. This is the floodplains and the street buffers. The floodplains are shown in blue and the teal color is the street buffer. So you can see that the virtually you know, 90% of the park is in a floodplain or has some kind of stream buffer constraint to it. Again, the constraint building at the same time it just adds a lot of sort of wonderful positive landscape here to the park itself. Uh, the wetland uh, map, uh, wetland showing yellow, might be a little hard to see as they occupy the, the middle of the park area, uh, pretty substantial. As I mentioned, uh, I guess maybe one thing uh, maybe you can say about the, the 09 plan is the fields um, had kind of been dropped in on some of the wetland areas. Those were going to have to be mitigated. Those fields had been dropped in on some of the stream areas, and you know, that's kind of problematic as well. And this is uh, kind of a combined uh, really a doable area. So if you combine all the environmental constraints, and what you get is kind of the area shown in kind of the reddish stone. And uh, I guess that is about 33 acres out of 38. The areas in green are really kind of the kind of the clear building areas, and that's about five acres you know, out of the 38. And so when I say doable, those would be the best areas for really kind of hard construction. Would be the best areas for pavilions, for picnic shelters, maybe for more structural playground, on spray parks, and those sorts of things. Things that you just wouldn't want to have down in the floodplain, you wouldn't want to have you know, get wet. Certainly, the train areas, you know, there's a whole litany of, of uh, you know, 
park amenities and, and, and park programming can go in those areas as well. It's probably going to be a less, you know, it's not going to be kind of structural, uh, structural elements. And this is just a little summary, just a quick little summary uh, of, what, of what the folks who took the survey thought was important. So those elements are shown on the left. So really the top, top you know, four things, the trails, the walking paths, the playgrounds, the pavilions, the, the, the soccer fields, all the You know, really very similar to the program for the for the Park. Uh, really that that much, at least by, by the survey response. And other ideas are, you know, things that we've been hearing about and uh, are also on the table, uh, as well as the Boy Scout facilities. So with that, I'm going to turn over to question. Yes. The, the wetlands area has got a lot of sensitive habitat and sensitive wildlife species there. If you build on that, is it an environmental impact statement or uh, study the demo yet? But there's a lot of species there that are going to be they start dealing with the wetlands. Well, you're absolutely correct. It would just all have to be have to be looked at. And, and again, that's kind of one of the reasons we're, we're visit, revisiting the master plan because I'm just a concern about trying to drop fields in on wetland areas. And, uh, I don't know, personally, I don't think that's a good idea. But uh, that would certainly, you know, other may may think that. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, any other questions? Or? Can the parking lots be built in those constrained areas? We do not really see parking as being a viable option in those areas. The buildings that were shown, have they been formally delineated? <coughs> Can we sort of guess of those big buildings are or have they been formally delineated? Uh, those have been formally delineated. I do believe that you show up on the surveyors. Climbing wall, uh, perhaps the observatory on top. 
And the idea uh, came to us that, as I said, the Old Trail Western Park might be a, a venue for the location of this um, survey of both our needs and communities. So this is just to give you a better idea of the community. Up, upstairs in the second building, we have a large um, common area. We, we built this or designed it in such a way that the common area would be uh, leasable, uh, trying to offset some of our costs. We know, particularly in the valley, there's not a lot of venues for weddings and, and uh, large gatherings, et cetera. So we thought this would be an opportunity for the Seattle organization to generate some income. Um, also, it's big enough to hold the board meeting time. Uh, outdoor areas for gathering, etc. The offices would be located there. Our scout shop, we also have a shop, a small shop, where scouts buy their uniforms um, in Sydney, and some scout are in So this is this is your this is Western Park, and where you see, if you can see it, the gray area in the middle is that portion that Dave just pointed out that is buildable. Um, it is the only, well, not the only, but almost the only site on that in the park where you can build a center like the one we designed. So go to the next one, I think. And the next one. So here's a little bit closer closer view, and we'll show it. There it is. Yeah, there it is on the site. So it's taking the two buildings you, you saw in the first slide and simply trying to orient them in a way that makes sense on this site. Um, next slide. This would be approaching it from the road. This uh, tile area, a area, uh, would be parking. We can fit um, 46 spaces on that site. Um, next slide. And this is the, the view from um, down below from one of those floor, floor things. So the objective here, as I said, would be to build a facility that um, fits this site that is usable for scouting not only as a building, but also the surrounding area would be incorporated into what we think of as a scout center. Camping, obviously, uh, the sort of synchronized scouting, we want to camp. The camping areas don't require building at all, it requires a fire pit. We can make all sorts of other community-oriented activities. The, the, the nice thing about putting a scout center in a place like this is how Eagle Scouts can do Eagle projects on something that is not owned by scouts, uh, which would be to facilitate building playgrounds, um, camping facilities, activities, STEM activities, <laughs> uh, pavilions, gathering areas, uh, etc. Those all can be done by our scouts, which would be an exciting dimension to the project for us because it would involve our scouts in community. Parenthetically, by the way, our scouts provide some 25,000 hours of community service every year across our council. And this would be another place where they could do uh, that. So, as I said, we'll, we'll be around to do the tag with our scout executives, you alluded to our architect, and I'll, I'll stick around for questions, et cetera, unless there's any right. I'm a former strong American astronaut, so I don't know what we're trying to help again. There's, there's too much lights there. We don't want to cop that. That's why we're playing. You can't hear you. You said there's too much lights. Yeah. We need to be in a darker area. Nothing. I'm not talking about this. We're talking about something that don't want to cop. Yeah, right, sure. It's just too bright. Oh, here? Yeah, that's good advice. We were thinking just kind of more open air, more. Can you do that? Yeah, for sure. Sorry. I'm just wondering about the rentable space. Yes, sir. Roughly, what would the capacity be, and then how would that compare with the 40 some parking space? Yeah, our, well, it's 100. We have seating for 100, and we have parking for 46. Obviously, there, there, we would have to think through expansion. There would be events there, perhaps, where you'd park, you'd park 60 bucks or 70 bucks. And the pool has uh, both parking. It also has area where you can, you can conceive of expanded parking. But again, those are, believe me, those are details that we haven't considered. We're just conceptualizing this now. 
That's all. That's yes. not a bad thing. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. How much of the five buildable acres would this building and parking lot take up? Um, you saw that the buildable, the large buildable areas are really in two chunks. So this would take up one chunk. My guess, maybe David knows better, my guess would be about half of it. Thanks. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I would suggest permeable parking area. Yes. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, this, I said paved, and I, I almost caught myself. I shouldn't have said it. never paved. I know you probably yes, already so. caught it, but yeah. that's... You called it time. That was my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This so I'll show my ignorance of the prior park master plan. This wasn't part of the prior master plan, so this is a new proposal. Absolutely. Tell me as far as... This was a recent idea, right. like about four weeks ago. And thanks to Stephen, we, we actually were able to put something together to show you today. Yes, ma'am. So would the land under the building still be park land, or would the Boy Scouts be buying this property? Again, conceptually, we wouldn't buy the property long-term lease it. Question back there. I'm just trying to clarify this. So we're building a facility on state land that you have, you, in order for the citizens of Prince to use that are not part of the Boy Scouts, we have to rent to use that facility. So yes, is, there, is there a method of uh, those that are citizens of Prince that have a discount of some sort? Since it's no, so the idea would be that the government is to be interpreted. No, what I meant by that was there are commercial uses for which we would lease. There are community uses for which we would charge nothing. Thank you. That, that, yeah, I didn't mean we were going to start charging the community for, for their community meetings. I'm sure this is, there's an owner's association meeting that I can imagine would love to have a spot like that, um, and we wouldn't charge for those things. But if somebody wants to hold a wedding reception there, we'd be happy to earn some money. Do you think we can Yes. No. Well, I know that you brought up an HOA meeting there. I live in the trail about potentially building a uh, clubhouse or something like right. most communities have. Right. Uh, so I don't know if that's something that you guys are collaborating with and we've discussed. But no, so as I said, this, this is a very, very new idea. So we, we've not collaborated, we've not fleshed out details of that nature. I only mentioned the commercial side of it because I wanted to you all to understand that we would like to use it commercially as well. It generates revenue. Every year, the Scouts Council raises all of its operating budget. So every year, we go into the community and try to raise a million and a half bucks. And it's, as you all know, it's not an easy thing to do. So we would like to have another source of revenue that we have available to us. And so if there were facilities like Camp Sutton, something like that, would Parks and Rec incorporate those into their sort of management system and reservations in the same way that they do other park facilities? Is that something you're thinking about? That's certainly one way to think about it, is that they would incorporate into their system, or we would manage the park. I mean, it may be that it would be another community service that scouts could provide. I'm thinking of scouts themselves. The more that we can get our young people involved in doing that kind of thing, the more excited I am about the project. But building the things, managing the things, tending to them, keeping them up. I mean, we have 108 years of stewardship in, in nature, and you know, I'd love to see this be an opportunity to continue that stewardship for, for our scouts. But of course, a family wanted to sign up for a campsite, that, as long as it wasn't jammed for a weekend. Absolutely. That, that yeah. would be something that was available to yeah. everyone. Yeah, and these Eagle Scout projects that I mentioned, you can envision building a playground out of wood, for instance. 10, 12, 15 individual Eagle Scouts with build pieces of it and it would be available for the community to use. Absolutely. Where were you talking about putting the campsite? Where were you talking about putting the campsite? For the, uh, for the sake of time, we need we need to move on, okay? And these guys will be around. I know there's probably still still a lot of questions, uh, but again, for the sake of time, we need, we need to move forward. They, they, they will be, be here, wandering around, if you have uh, further questions, yeah, that mic's not working. It's not even on.
Okay, uh, so we're going to break up into small groups so that we can have some more focused discussions on um, on what you all feel like is a good vision for the park and what kind of amenities you'd like to see there. We have six facilitators and way more than six tables, <laughs> so this, uh, we're going to take a minute to um, ask everyone to, to pair tables up. So two tables smushed together, so find a table that looks like a good table to join your table. Um, and then a facilitator will join you um, and we'll have a discussion. But I think a lot of folks acknowledge the existing kind of limitations there, and there was a real desire to preserve the existing natural characteristics of the site. Um, the idea that anything built should fit in the neighborhood aesthetics, whether, no matter what the use was. Um, also, the idea that we should really look at the existing facilities in Crozet, so we're not duplicating things, but creating kind of amenities that are lacking in the broader community. The idea of a destination playground was also strongly supported by this group. The idea of a natural playground um, also came up something with natural features like rocks or so. Uh, the idea of a trail along the stream, maybe a trailhead that could to the larger trail network that's planned for Crozet and the surrounding area. And also this idea of a connection between the natural and the built of the areas of the park that might get built with these trail amenities in the naturally preserved areas. The yeah, restrooms was an important idea and not portable toilets. <laughs> elsewhere. Also the idea that playgrounds need to be age appropriate or interesting for more, a larger age group. People felt that because they had some playground amenities for younger kids, but they had lost interest in there isn't something kind of for that next level of kids. And the idea that a community space would need to be four seasons, um, so probably an enclosed space rather than an open air facility. And then with this group as well, parking, um, the preference was for parking behind the pool. And a lot of people felt that parking on Bull Drill Drive would be unsafe for all of that. As part of the invitation for this meeting that we sent out, uh, that the county sent out um, over our e-newsletter system, um, we did also provide an opportunity for people that didn't want to come to the meeting or couldn't come to the meeting to sort of weigh in on the same questions. Um, and it was the, we had 360 people take it, um, and uh, the themes are really similar to what we heard here tonight. So trails and walking paths were overwhelmingly the most popular amenity, um, playground equipment, picnic shelters, the existing soccer fields and then the parking plots that are there right now also um, had a lot of support from what we heard online. Um, just one other way that we're making available for folks to, to provide input in this process. Um, I want to ask Bob or David to talk about what sort of the next steps after tonight are, and then we'll wrap this part up. Go ahead. Yes, sir. 
I just like to say thank you to the county and you guys for coming out here this tonight. Well, that's all we like to thank you, but the, the real thanks go back to you guys, not us. Uh, we felt a duty that uh, we try to get as much engagement from this community as so this is a community park. Because we're going to do an old record. Because the meters and park where it's a pros a community park. And we just wanted to make sure that they, even though the original master plan was almost 10 years old, that those changes in deeds have not changed or they have changed. And this has been very helpful. So thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah, Sorry. Just, just two real quick uh, comments. One, if you just said it, is echoing Tom's comments a little bit. It seemed like we had a really good master plan before. <coughs> And so, you know, it seems like we're starting a do here or somewhat. It seems like we really should be looking at that old master plan and saying what's changed that warrants changes. Number one. And that'll be part of the process. Yeah, I was a little surprised like there wasn't even a picture of the or of the old plan or anything for us to look at. And I guess the other comment I'd have is encouraging the county to find ways of funding. Park, so it actually happens. I don't know. Obviously, that's county funding that might be chasing grant monies differently. I'm not sure why, but you know, I don't think we're going to go through and say, okay, so much work to call another plan that doesn't get built for the next 10 years. So I would hope that a big part of the effort, and would encourage the county, a big part of the effort to be figuring out are there other ways of funding this or. And again, that's also part of the process. Once we have a firm idea and a good idea, then what that part is going to look like with the cost of it, then we'll look into a funding strategy. Private, public, mm -hmm. and we'll get that. Just to clarify, this is county park. Yes, county park. Does it mean it would be maintained by the county? Yes, yes. Just like any other county. It'll fall within our main program. Okay, any other questions? Bob, if someone has a comment after tonight, can they contact me? Contact me. Uh, I'm the best way to get my information out. I can even be found, found on the website or whatever. Or, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, whatever the best, best means on What? And I'll leave two copies of the current plan and the library. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. And if you have any other questions, Contact him or myself.